Here's how I built a seven figure business using seven simple steps and two lucky bricks. You see, I used to be a broke, struggling personal trainer who was socially anxious and a binge drinker. Didn't want to be any of those things. And so I started looking around and got lucky in that the internet was coming along just as I was finishing school. And so the internet afforded me this opportunity to be an introvert, but actually sell things on the internet because I didn't have to go door to door and suffer rejection. So that was the first big lucky break. And you're going to learn exactly how to use these seven steps that I used so that you you can become a millionaire too. Hi, my name is Craig Valentine and I was a personal trainer who then got a lucky break writing for Men's Health Magazine, which gave me the critical credibility to go on and sell millions of dollars worth of fitness programs. And then I wrote The Perfect Day Formula, The Perfect Week Formula, and Unstoppable, my book about overcoming anxiety. And I monetized all of those to build multiple seven-figure businesses. Now, this isn't just something that I've used. I've taught this to nursing students. I've taught this to high school teachers. I've taught this to nutritionists. I've taught this to real estate agents. So many people have built seven figure, eight figure, and even nine figure businesses. In fact, one of those people I just mentioned sold their business for $115 million. It was a business that they started as a student. Another one of those people, Joel Marion, built a $100 million a year supplement company. And he came to me as a struggling high school teacher. So it's amazing what you can do with these seven steps that you're about to learn today. And again, you're going to be able to use these in a very simple, practical method. Method because I started my first seven figure business in a bedroom in an apartment that I shared with two high school friends. And I built that first seven figure business from that room, even though I was having severe anxiety attacks. So let's go through with step number one. The thing that really helped me was having crystal clear clarity on my customer avatar because I knew who I was writing all my emails for. Eventually, when I started creating videos, I was creating videos for a specific person. And it was by having that crystal clear clarity, I knew exactly what to say. So if you can imagine a bullseye where you have your perfect customer in the middle, all the descriptions, all the characteristics about them, and you put your messages towards them, you want to get those people to buy. Now, some people in the ring around will see that and they'll go, yeah, that's pretty interesting. So I'll buy two. And the ring outside of that, that doesn't actually resonate with everybody there, but you'll get people buying from that and so on and so forth. And so let me show you exactly how clear I was on my avatar. When I was writing my emails to my email list, I was speaking to a guy named Mark. He was 34 years old. He lived in Pennsylvania. He was like Jim from The Office. He had an hour commute. He worked for a horrible boss like Michael Scott at Dunder Mifflin. He sat at his desk all day. He hated it. He drove home. And as soon as he drove home in his beige minivan, he drove up. He had a huge lawn. He had a nice house out in the suburbs where it wasn't expensive and there was children's toys all over the front lawn. He drove up and he got up to the house and he was really tired, but his two boys, age six and four, would run to the door and yell, daddy, daddy. And then they would go in the backyard and play a little bit of baseball just before dinner. And then he would grill for the family, you know, cook some steak or hot dogs or hamburgers or chicken or whatever it is. And then they'd eat. And then after that, they gave the kids a bath, him and his wife, Jenny, who he was college sweethearts with. And then he would go down to the basement. She would plop down on the couch and watch a little TV. He would go down to the basement. He would use these rusty dumbbells that he got secondhand and a bench. And that was all he had. But he was the men's health reader that I had been writing for for so long. I knew exactly what to say to him. I said, you don't have to go to a gym. You don't have to do long workouts. You don't have to exercise every single day. All you have to do is my turbulence training program three times per week in your basement in under 45 minutes, and you'll get building muscle and burning fat, and you'll start looking like you did 10 years ago in college. And that spoke to Mark. And so Mark was done that workout. He would go upstairs. He would sit down beside Jenny. He was sweaty, but she was okay with it. They'd have a little bit of cuddle time, and then they'd go to bed, and they'd do it all again the next day. And by writing for that bullseye customer avatar, I sold hundreds of thousands of copies of that program. They weren't all to Mark. In fact, I sold half of my programs to women because I was talking about getting amazing results in a short amount of time. And that was enough to resonate with them. Eventually, I built a terminal training for women. And then I built a bodyweight only program because my customers said, I don't have any dumbbells in my basement. I just have my bodyweight only. And so by listening to my customers, I was able to refine that customer avatar even more to actually build a second one in a second business. And then as I moved on to the productivity, I've got my own customer avatar for the productivity coaching. So you see, whatever business business it is that you're in, whether you're selling jam down at a flea market or whether you're selling real estate that costs $20 million or more in Westchester County, New York, you have to have a perfect customer avatar. And when you make videos, when you send emails, when you write Facebook ads, you have to be talking to that individual specifically. Because when you do, you'll resonate so strongly with them that you will get a lot of great customers. They'll give you ideas for future products and that's how you're going to grow. So that's the first step. And it's a fun step because it gets you in that imaginative thing 
thinking. It doesn't require any math and away you go. You are going to figure that out, which will allow you to be so much different and stand out from everybody, which leads me to number two. So step number two is creating your big idea. And I have a big idea formula that I use and that I've seen been used by some of the most popular products and books in history. So the way that the big idea formula goes is that you need to be contrarian. You need to think different. When everybody says, well, back in the day, everybody said you have to do like six hours of cardio per week to lose weight. And I said, no way. You don't even have to do cardio. You don't even have to do cardio. Zero hours of cardio. You have to do three 45 minute resistance training workouts in your basement and some body weight exercises. That's contrarian thinking. Remember, this is almost 25 years ago when everybody thought you had to go to the gym. Along came CrossFit and totally changed that and turbulence training, of course. But back in the day, that was incredibly contrarian thinking. And so you need to obviously believe your contrarian idea, but it needs to be different than what everybody else is saying. Otherwise, you won't stand out. Now, you should also be specific. It should be short and it should have a particular articulation. It means it should be catchy. Now, what's one of the best books that summarizes this? Think Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss and the four hour work week. Contrarian, four hours. I thought it was 40 hours I had to work. Very specific, four, not shorter work week. And it had a particular articulation. It was very short, four hour work week. Man, you can refer that to somebody so quickly. And so that's a great example of the big idea formula. So over to you, no matter, even if you're creating a product, like think about, you know, we have two young kids. We'd go through a lot of diapers, the honest diaper company. Oh, they're honest. Everybody else is just, you know, putting Mickey Mouse on their diapers, but they're the honest company. Oh, that's contrarian. Cause I didn't even know that there was lying diapers, right? And so that stands out, honest company. So it's one of the million big ideas that are out there in the marketplace that stand out. Third thing is that I became good at selling through copywriting. So you need to learn how to sell. You can either sell nose to nose, toes to toes, face to face, door to door. You can sell over the phone. You can sell in your office. You can sell that way. I decided to become great at copywriting, which is salesmanship in print. So I learned how to write sales pages. I learned how to write emails. I learned how to write Facebook ads. And that was the way that I built my money. So you have to have a high income selling skill. And again, it can be that face to face sales. It can be phone sales. It can be getting people into your luxury yacht uh, dealership, or you can use copywriting. You can also use speaking online. So I'm speaking right now and selling this way. You can speak from stage. That's another way to have a high income skill, but you have to be able to sell one way or another. If you are not doing the work to become good at sales, you're never going to build a business. You can be doing social media reels and you can get your business license and your business cards, but that's not really building a business. So that's just doing a bunch of activity. No, you have to get good at sales. You have to get what my mentor Mark Ford called an optimal selling system. The one best way that gets the most sales into your business and perfect that. And then you just have to double down on it until you've hit that million dollar mark. Step number four is you have to have critical credibility and the ultimate authority. So if you go way back to the year 2000, I'm still a graduate student at Master University in Canada. And I had an email list. I had actually built an email list that I kept on a Word document. So I didn't even have any software or anything. I had 3000 people on an email list that I kept in groups of 50 inside a Word document because I was sending all my emails out through Hotmail. And you can only send an email out through Hotmail to 50 people at a time. So I had 60 groups of 50 email addresses. And every single Monday, I would send an email out to my list. And it was all science. It was so over the top. It was written. I was a graduate student. It was written for other graduate students. But I sent out these workout emails. And it would take me 75 minutes to send out 60 versions of the email to those groups of 50 names so that I could get 3,000 emails out. It's insane. That's how bootstrapped I was and how there was nothing available to me 25 years ago. But what I did one night as I was sitting in the basement, of, I was living in a house, Hamilton, Ontario, with a couple of college roommates. And the only guy with an internet connection in the entire house was my roommate who lived in the basement. And a couple times a week, he would go out and train Kung Fu. And so I would go down to his computer and log on to my school internet. And I would send that email out, or I'd send another email out to the editor of Men's Health Magazine because I found his email online. And so I sent him my most recent newsletter. And this is one of my lucky breaks. He decided to put some of my content in the magazine. I'm 25 years old and that big break gave me critical credibility. It allowed me to write more for the magazine. It allowed me to be paid to answer questions on their forum. Imagine that, being paid to answer questions on a forum. I was getting $1,000 US for an article that would publish in the magazine. I lived in Canada at the time and the exchange rate was so crazy. I was getting $1,500. It was like I, like, like I won the lottery. In addition to 
generating more emails for my newsletter list, but I still didn't know how to sell anything. But that critical credibility allowed me to then connect with other people in the industry, you know, get speaking gigs a few years later to get people to my YouTube channel in 2007 when I started it and so on and so forth, all because of that lucky break. Now over to you, how can you develop critical credibility in your community and online authority? You don't have to write for Men's Health Magazine, but if you can get on a radio show or a TV show or a podcast, a big podcast, so you need to do stuff so that other people are saying, hey, this is an expert, listen to them if you're selling information or this person knows what they're cooking up if they're selling jam down at the flea market or this person's car dealership is number one in the community, it has amazing cars, has amazing deals, has amazing service. You need other people saying that and giving you the critical credibility and authority because people are very skeptical. But if you have critical credibility, people overlook their skepticism of me and said, well, this guy's in Men's Health Magazine. He must know what he's doing, right? And it gave me the no like and trust factor and allowed me to sell because the more that people know, like, and trust you, the easier it is for you to sell some. So having that was a huge, huge step. Number five is serious social proof. So what I did, there was two ways to set a social proof. One, you can have your own story and you must have your own story. But two, you can also get social proof from end users. What I did to get my personal social proof, my own story, was in 2007, I was in the best shape of my life. And so at the time I was living in Toronto, but my father was ill. And so I was going back to my parents' house almost every weekend. And one, you know, there I had kettlebells and some dumbbells. And so one day I was out training in the backyard in the summertime and I had a digital camera. This is 2007, right around when the first iPhone came out. But I I didn't have an iPhone for another 10 years. And I asked my mom to take a photo and I knew nothing about lighting. And I had a kettlebell I was holding overhead and I had my chocolate lab standing beside me and I had ripped abs. And this photo, the lighting just happened to work out. I had no idea what I was doing, but it was early in the morning and we were in the backyard and the, the sun was behind my mom and just made the photo awesome. And that was my seven figure photo because I put that on my website. It was in the Toronto Star Magazine. GQ took a drawing of it and put it in their magazine in 2010. It was been used by t-shirt companies, by kettlebell companies. And it just, it was proof that what I was doing worked. So I had my own story from that, my serious social proof, a dramatic demonstration of proof. And then what I did was I had thousands of customers by then. I started getting their shirts off photos. I started a transformation contest where you had to let me use your before and after photos in my marketing because I paid the winners a thousand or three thousand dollars. So I got all these photos and I had my own photo. And that was serious social proof to show that my program worked. Now, if you're selling jam down at the flea market, you're just going to get raving customers. You can get them on video, you get pictures, you get written testimonials. Same with your luxury car dealership, your real estate portfolio, all of these things. You need that social proof. It helps people know, like, and trust you. Now into step number six, you're only going to get so far as a one person show. And so you have to have sales system replication. After you develop the optimal selling system, for your business, you have to figure out how can I get people out there selling for me? For example, a real estate agent. Well, they eventually start a brokerage and they get other real estate agents selling under the brokerage and they take some of that money. Or you build a phone sales team or you build a door-to-door -door sales team. I have a lot of solar CEOs as coaching clients and they have an army of young men and women out there knocking on doors selling solar and they get a bit of that money. Now online, what we do is we get affiliates. So we'll write an email to our list. People will buy, we'll say, hey, Joe, I'm gonna give you this email. So this email out to your list. It's got an affiliate link in it. You're going to get a commission on every sale. And so I've had thousands of affiliates sell my turbulence training program. In fact, we did a product launch in 2013 when I had my first ever million dollar month and we had it was gross revenue, but we didn't really keep much of that money because we paid out 80% of that in commission. Now we had all these customers and we sold more stuff to them in the future, but that first sale, almost all the money went to our affiliates. They were selling for us, giving us customers. I didn't have to go run Facebook ads. They were giving us customers and then we went and ran Facebook ads. So ads, Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, that's another replication of your sales system so that it can be working 24 hours a day for you. SEO is another way, you know, getting people to your website, having that sales letter, replicating it digitally is how you can scale your business. But you can't be out there doing every single sale yourself if you want to get past the million dollar mark. So we have covered first clarity on your customer avatar, then my big idea formula, then your high income selling skill with either copywriting or sales 
sales are speaking. And then critical credibility, authority, serious social proof, and then number six, which is sales system replication. And finally, step number seven, which is mentorship. So I hired my first business coach in 2006, and he tripled my income in 90 days. And then I joined a mastermind group with Yannick Silver, and he got me to run my first business event because so many people were saying, Craig, how do I do this? So I had a business event in 2007 with 53 people who paid $2,500 each to be there. And I started a mastermind group of my own. And I kept on getting mentors. And eventually I got a mentor named Bedros Koulian, who was the most important mentor of my entire life. And he helped me become very rich. So you must get a mentor. A mentor is going to give you a blueprint because they've been there and done that and achieved what you want to achieve. They're going to cut years off your learning curve. And then you also want to have accountability to this mentor so that they tell you what to do. You say, I'm going to do it. And they hold your feet to the fire. Because if you're just out there on Lonely Entrepreneur Island doing this all on your own, you're a lone wolf, you're going to struggle. You're going to have setbacks. And on those days when you don't have a mentor to go to for help or you don't have the accountability, you're going to struggle and you're going to get stuck if you don't have that mentorship. And a tribe, you need to get to mastermind meetings and get involved with your tribe of other like-minded, ambitious people who are going to hold you to a higher level. And when you have all of those seven things in place, that's all you need to hit seven figures, even eight figures, even nine figures, like my client who sold the business for $115 million and my friend Joel Marion who sold his business for $100 million. You are going to be able to do a fraction of that. Maybe you're going to surpass them, but that's really the foundation that you need. And I can't wait to hear your success story. So go through this and then hit me up on Instagram at Real Craig Valentine. Let me know if you have any questions and keep me posted on your progress. You can also email me at Craig at Craig Valentine.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your success story and I want to hear your questions. You can also drop your question down below, but I want you to be my next seven figure, eight figure, nine figure success story so that I can brag about you to all of my friends. All right, get out there, get going and put those seven steps into place and you'll get a lucky break along the way too, just like I did.